Let me give you three warnings as you stand on the edge of this thing, as you're maybe coming into the church for the first time. I want to give you three warnings. Here's number one. Don't undervalue or mistreat your family. It would be a shame for someone to come in and be like, yeah, well, I just heard Carter's message, so y'all better be treating me really well. That really wasn't the heart of it. The heart of it was you take responsibility for treating everybody else well. I mean, you, you know this, man. Anywhere, it doesn't matter if it's church or work or wherever you go, any, anytime you walk into a place with a spirit of entitlement, you're going to lose more friends than you're going to gain. So we just never want a spirit of entitlement. We want to protect the unity of spirit uh, through the bond of love. Here's the second one. This might be the most important one. Submit your dysfunctionality to the Lord because you're a broken thing. It doesn't matter what family you're coming from. There were things about your family that were probably really, really good and things that are at, are at odds with the culture of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And part of come, that's part, one of the reasons God puts us into the spiritual families because he says, there's some things I need to correct about how you relate to others and I'm going to use the church of Jesus Christ as a family to do that. But that means you just have to have a real spirit of meekness and say, God, I'm a broken thing. I'm a little bit, I've got the poison of my own personal brands of sin in me. And I don't want to like get that off on everybody. I want you to sanctify it out of me so that I'm doing as much good as possible to this family. So it takes a lot of humility, but we've all got dysfunctionality and we all came from somewhere. And some of the places we came from, we're not, we don't even know yet that those aren't really the way God wants us to interact with other humans. And so let me plead with you. Submit your own dysfunctionality to Jesus and say, Jesus, I give you this. Would you soften me and help me to uh, honor and value my spiritual family the way that I should? And you know what? You're going to make mistakes. I mean, you just got to know. And that's okay. Like, it's cool here. Dude, you can, I expect you to make mistakes because I'm very aware that everybody who is a part of this church is still wrestling with sin. That's all good. It's all good in the family if you know you're a little jacked up. It's the ones who can't admit that they're a little jacked up. That's what we get worried. So submit your dysfunctionality to the Lord. Here's the third one. And this is a really important one for at, at least when this is recorded right now. In the past year, we have learned through the COVID pandemic that digital ministry, man, it's really good. It can really be helpful. It can really help a lot of people do a couple things. It can help us stay connected during the pandemic. And some will say, well, that's not real, you know, human interaction. Well, but it's kind of real. I mean, you're, you're being you, you're, you're interacting as you, you're being authentic as you do it. So it's definitely a version of real. It's also good for helping people connect with the church who maybe, they, you know, they're, they're not going to visit anytime soon. They just want to like kind of stay hidden and watch. How does this work? How does this go? It's really effective for that reaching people that are very far away from the church. But here's what we also know. As great as those things are, and there's nothing wrong with them. They're absolutely, we should do them. They're great if, if you miss, if your kid's got a tournament and you're going to miss, hey man, you just jump online and you get to interact with the digital and the people in the chat there. That's awesome. All that is really good. But it's not sufficient entirely for true discipleship and spiritual family. It's good. It's great. Don't feel bad about it. But just know, once this pandemic is over, once there's nothing keeping you from connecting with actual humans, baby, you got to find a way to do it. I hope that you'll find it here. But even if it's just you're just collecting a group of Christians uh, before work and you're, you're having a little Bible study or whatever, whatever you do, you've got to get actual humans because you can't replace presence. At the end of the day, you can't. There's things you can only learn by watching people. There's things you can only learn by seeing how they spoke that way or how gently they did that thing. We need one another. We need to learn from one another, but not just concepts, the way of things. And so as wonderful as digital is, and we're going to keep investing in it. I mean, I really believe in it. it, it we're going to keep bringing it further, making it better. I would encourage you to serve it, man. Give to it. That sounds great. But just know that just like you need both carbs and protein, okay, digital is a little bit like the carbs. It's good and you can live off it for a while, but if you don't have any protein, maybe you're going to get unhealthy pretty soon. If you don't have any presence, if you don't have any other Christians around you that are locking arms and, you know, holding hands with you sometimes and praying, you're just going to be missing part of how God designed the church to go. We need one another. Digital is wonderful and awesome. 
But when it comes to discipleship, it's not quite enough. We need presence.